Then they tell kids that plants are adapted to their environment. Adapted? Yes, boys and girls, gills are an adaptation to living in water. Oh, well, how did they live before they adapted the gills? Hmm? Well, you see, Mr. Oven, for millions of years, they all died. None of them lived until they adapted the gills. Oh, I see. Why don't they say it's a design feature? See, they avoid using the word designed because then some kid's going to say, who's the designer? Hmm? Adaptations for living on land. Legs. Oh, yes, boys and girls. Legs support the body's weight as well as allow movement from place to place. Well, that's true. It doesn't prove they adapted by themselves, though. Lungs. Oh, boy, the delicate structure of a fish's gills depends on water for support. On land, lungs carry out gas exchange. That's true. That's not proof one changed to the other, though. They just make this mental, imaginary connection in the kids' minds. I've got a Casio data bank stopwatch, or uh, watch, okay? Holds 300 phone numbers. It's a calculator, stopwatch, an alarm clock, and a countdown timer. It does not tell time. I have to look at it. But it's a pretty amazing machine. 70 bucks at Walmart. Um, I was in Japan a couple years ago, but I did not see the guy who makes the Casio data bank watch. I never saw him. Do I have to see the guy who made it to believe he exists? Hmm. Is it logical for me to stand here in Tennessee and say, I believe there's a watch designer in Japan that made this thing? Is that logical? Even if I never see him? Sure. Would it be illogical for me to say, I've never seen him, so I don't believe he exists? That would be totally dumb, wouldn't it? And you don't have to see the Creator to believe he exists, okay? Evolutionists argue against design using arguments they designed. Mm, think about that one. There's a great book talking about the complexity of living things at a micro scale. We sell the book at our website. Michael Behe wrote this on Darwin's black box. He spends a whole chapter describing the hair on a bacteria. That hair is so complicated, it's attached to a little tiny motor. The motor is so tiny that eight million of them would fit in the cross section of a human hair. But the motor turns 100,000 RPM. Let's see you build a motor like that. Pretty amazing. And as things get smaller, the world they live in feels more sticky to them. The viscosity of the fluid seems greater. So a bacteria swimming through water is about like a person swimming through peanut butter. And that little motor is so powerful and turns so fast, that bacteria can swim about like a person going 60 miles an hour through peanut butter. We got a little model of it in our museum if you want to come down and see how they work. And the textbook says, humans probably evolved from bacteria more than four billion years ago. What? They can swim through peanut butter 60 miles an hour. We should sign them up for the Olympics, man. <laughs> we evolved from them. <laughs> We're getting worse, not better. It's a lie. Nothing this small and complex could have happened by chance. This is a great book that we sell in our bookstore. Just simple illustrations. Could a box evolve? Could an ink pen evolve? Could a paperclip evolve? It just goes through a bunch of simple things and shows it just can't happen, okay? Then they talk about the origin of life. Yes, boys and girls, how living things started from non-living matter. This is pure baloney, how they teach this in the books. We're going to cover that after a quick break. Cover a few more lies in the textbooks and then tell you what you can do about it. Some practical steps to fix the problem.